Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar AS Academy. Displayed our list of news articles selected for today's analysis and their page numbers in different editions of the newspaper. The link for the handwritten notes in the PDF format and the timestamping of the discussed articles are provided in the description and also in the comment section for the benefit of the viewers. Now let us move on to the analysis of first news article. This news article is with reference to River Kaveri. The article states that water released from Stanley Reservoir in Metur in Tamil Nadu has reached the upper Anikat on the outskirts of Tiruchirappalli. The river water is released for the purposes of irrigation in delta areas. In this context, it is important for us to know about River Kaveri, its basin and also its biodiversity. The previous year questions in this regard relatable to what we are going to discuss have been given here for your reference. See, River Kaveri is one of the major rivers of Peninsular India. It is also referred as Ponni and also referred as Dakshina Ganga of South India. It is an interstate river. Its origin is in the state of Karnataka. It flows through Tamil Nadu and Puducherry and finally drains into Bay of Bengal. In that sense, it is an east flowing river. The river originates at Talakaveri on the Brahmagiri range of Western Ghats in the Koorg district of Karnataka. It originates at an elevation of about 1340 meters. Now coming to its important tributaries. First let's see tributaries that are joining from the left. These are Harangi, Hemavati, Shimsha and Arkavati. Now important tributaries joining from the right are Lakshman Tirtha, Kabini, Swarnavati, Bhavani, Noyil and Amaravati. Now you should note that Kaveri flows for a length of about 800 km before draining into Bay of Bengal. It is the third largest river in South India after Godavari and Krishna and it is the largest river in Tamil Nadu and here in Tamil Nadu it almost bisects the state into north and the south. Now coming to the basin of river Kaveri, it extends over an area of around 87,900 square kilometer which is approximately 2.7% of total geographical area of our country. The Kaveri Basin, it is bounded by Western Ghats on the west. In the east and south, it is bounded by Eastern Ghats. In the north, it is bounded by ridges which separate River Kaveri Basin from Krishna Basin and Pennar Basin. So we can see that the basin states for River Kaveri can be Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and also the Union Territory of Pondicherry. And physiographically, this basin of River Kaveri is divided into three parts. Western Ghats, Mysore Plateau and the Delta region. Here, the Delta area is the most fertile tract in this basin. Now coming to principal soil types that are found in this basin, we can see black soil, red soil, laterite soil, alluvial soil, forest and mixed soil also. Of these, red soil occupy large areas in this basin. We can find alluvial soil in the delta areas. Major part of Kaveri river basin is covered with agricultural land. That is about 66% of the total area of the basin. Now let's come to important storage reservoirs or important dams in this basin. We can find Harangi Dam, Hemavati Dam, Krishna Raja Sagar Dam and Kabini Reservoir in the state of Karnataka. In Tamil Nadu, we can see Metur Dam which is also called as Stanley Reservoir, then Grand Anakit Dam or Kallanai Dam. Just know that at the place where Kaveri enters Tamil Nadu state limits, Metur Dam or Reservoir has been constructed or formed. Now let us come to the biodiversity supported by the basin. See, Kaveri River Basin area has a large floristic wealth. If we exclude the vegetation of Western Ghats, the vegetation of entire peninsular India is adequately represented in this tract alone. In fact, the basin includes nearly every type of vegetation of Deccan, which is in east of Western Ghats. The known flora of this basin consists of uh, more than 2000 species of around 180 families. The river system itself harbors around 1050 species belonging to 128 families. Now, if you come to the riparian zone, it provides habitat for wildlife like Asian elephants, otter species, Nilgiri langar, Indian civet, lion-tailed macaque and so on. The forest landscapes here, they act as corridors of wildlife and the landscapes are in contiguous with large protected areas, for example, Nagarhol National Park, Talakaveri Wildlife Sanctuary, Brahmagiri Wildlife Sanctuary and Pushpagiri Wildlife Sanctuary. More importantly, the river ecology has abundance of fish species called as Golden Makshir. Here Makshir, it roughly translates as fish and tiger. Mahi means fish, Sher means tiger. Therefore, it is referred as tiger among the fish species. 
It lives in fast moving waters and inhibits in hill streams. India is said to be home to around 15 mukshir species out of 47 that exist in the world. A golden mukshir species has been listed as endangered on IUCN red list. There is one another fish species that is named after the river itself that is called as Kaveri Barb. This species is endemic to Western Ghats. The conservation status of all these species is given here for your reference. And we can find that most of the discussed species are threatened species. Now coming to examination point of view, let us see some important protected areas here. One is Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary of Karnataka. It is located on the banks of River Kaveri. The sanctuary forms a part of Eastern Ghats. Kaveri runs through the sanctuary from west to east, that is from Hakki Kallu to Hokanekal Falls. Next, let's see about Brahmagiri Wildlife Sanctuary in Karnataka. It lies in the core of Western Ghats. The sanctuary is catchment for Kaveri because two important tributaries, Lakshman Tirtha and Rama Tirtha, they originate from this wildlife sanctuary. Next is Tala Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary in Karnataka. It is situated in western side of Kur district. It also forms the core of Western Ghats and also the catchment of Kaveri. You should know that Kaveri River originates from Tala Kaveri only. Next important sanctuary is Rangana Titu Bird Sanctuary. Now, this bird sanctuary is situated in Mandya district of Karnataka. The sanctuary consists of six islands and six islets in River Kaveri. Islets are nothing but small islands. Here the islets are main breeding ground for variety of local and migratory birds. We can also say that Ranganathittu Bird Sanctuary is located on the islands of River Kaveri also. So these are four important protected areas that are associated with River Kaveri. With this, we come to the end of analysis of this news article. In the analysis, we discussed about River Kaveri in detail, its basin, its important tributaries. And we also saw the wildlife and biodiversity associated with River Kaveri. Now let's move on to the analysis of next news article. This news article is with reference to a petition that challenges the notification issued by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. This notification was issued on April 4. Under the notification, implementation of some of the rules of preconception and prenatal diagnostic techniques, prohibition of sex selection rules 1996, were put on hold or suspended temporarily till June 30, 2020. Now we know that we have a legislation that bans sex selection before or after conception. This legislation is called as Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Regulation and Prevention of Misuse Act of 1994. In exercise of powers given under Section 32 of this law, Central Government has enacted the 1996 rules. The petitioner has claimed that by suspending some of the rules, the Central Government has arbitrarily and selectively weakened and diluted the 1994 legislation that aimed to curb the activity of sex selection and sex determination. Under the notification, rule number 8, then subrule 8 of rule number 9, then subrule 6 of rule 18 capital A are suspended. The petitioner claims that illegal suspension of these rules violate article 14 and 21 of Indian constitution. Article 14 deals with right to equality and article 21 deals with right to life and personal liberty. Simply right to life. Now this is because of suspension of these rules. Selectively female fetuses could be aborted or killed and thereby it violates article 21 and sex selective abortion or sex determination is a parameter of gender inequality as one gender is targeted and killed in the mother's womb itself and therefore it violates article 14 right to equality. The petition also added that because of the practice of gender biased sex selection or sex determination in India every year around 4.6 lakh girl children are missing at birth. For the 12 year period from 2001 to 2012, around 55 lakh girl children were missing at birth. And in the light of the petition, the Supreme Court has asked the government to explain its decision to suspend crucial rules of this parliamentary law of 1994 against prenatal sex determination and sex selection. Now let us see some of the rules that were suspended. First, let us see about Rule 8, which is connected with the provisions of the law that deals with mandatory registration of genetic counseling centers, laboratories and clinics. Now Rule 8 deals with renewal of registration. Now for renewal of registration, certain tasks are to be performed by government authorities. For example, an inquiry has to be conducted. Then the authority has to be satisfied that applicant has complied with all the requirements of the law and the rules. Then the authority has to get the advice of the advisory committee. 
After performing these tasks, renewal of the certificate of registration can be done for a further period of five years from the date of expiry. Now, the suspension of this rule gives lot of confusions and ambiguity as how far renewal of registration will be handled during the lockdown or till June 30. The petition argued that the suspension of this article while on one side the medical establishments are continuously functioning gives possibilities for misuse of technology for the purpose of sex selection and sex determination. Now coming to sub rule 8 of rule 9 it regulates maintenance and preservation of records by genetic counseling centers laboratories and clinics. It states that every genetic counseling center genetic lab genetic clinic ultrasound clinic and imaging center shall send a complete report in respect of all pre-consumption or pregnancy related procedures techniques or tests that are conducted by them such a complete report has to be given by fifth of the following month to concerned appropriate authority now this forwarding a complete report about what happened in a particular month is an important compliance mechanism and it also paves way for monitoring by the appropriate authorities now suspension of this rule in particular has evoked a lot of criticisms with reference to dilution of compliance and monitoring of the provisions of the act now coming to rule 18 capital a this rule deals with role of government authorities which could be at the level of state district or at the sub district level here under this rule 18a sub rule 6 is suspended this rule states that appropriate authorities shall submit quarterly progress report to the central government through state governments and appropriate authorities at the level of district state and sub district they have to ensure that they possess all the information about all the registrations readily available now these are some of the suspended provisions and these are rules that provide for efficient monitoring for the implementation of the provisions of the act so as to achieve the objective of saving lives of girl children at birth in this analysis we saw the suspended rules in the pre-conception and prenatal diagnostic techniques prohibition of sex selection rules of 1996 now let's move on to the analysis of next news article this news article is with reference to nuclear verification by International Atomic Energy Agency in Iran. See, the Director General of uh, International Atomic Energy Agency has recently noted that for over four months, Iran has denied access to two locations. And for almost one year, Iran has not engaged in substantial discussions to clarify the questions of this agency, which are related to possible undeclared nuclear material and undeclared nuclear related activities. Therefore, the agency noted that blocking of inspection is adversely affecting its ability to resolve the questions and to provide credible assurance of absence of undeclared nuclear material and undeclared nuclear activities in Iran. Therefore, the agency has asked Iran to cooperate immediately and to cooperate fully with the agency, including giving prompt access to the refused locations. Now, why this International Atomic Energy Agency need access to these locations? Simply to conduct nuclear verification, it continues to verify the non-diversion of nuclear material which are declared by Iran under safeguards agreement. See, the International Atomic Energy Agency, it also monitors and evaluates the absence of undeclared nuclear material and activities for Iran. This is because Iran has agreed to implement the nuclear-related commitments under the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which is also called as Iran Nuclear Deal. See, this deal was arrived in July 2015 among five permanent members of UN Security Council, along with Germany, European Union and Iran. The deal aims to ensure that Iran's nuclear program will be exclusively peaceful. So under this deal, Iran affirmed that under no circumstances, it will seek or develop or acquire any nuclear weapons and it will not divert the nuclear material for non-peaceful purposes. So this means Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action imposes restrictions on Iran's civilian nuclear enrichment program. And based on this, UN Security Council has adopted a resolution by which United Nations has requested the Director General of International Atomic Energy Agency so as to undertake necessary verification and monitoring of Iran related to these matters. These are with reference to nuclear related commitments for the entire duration of commitments under the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action.
But in January 2020, Iran announced that its nuclear program would no longer be subject to any restrictions in operational sphere. But it also announced that it will continue to cooperate with International Atomic Energy Agency. However, International Atomic Energy Agency notes that even after making such an announcement in January 2020, Iran has been largely cooperative. However, now it has refused access to two important sites. In this context, let us see in brief about International Atomic Energy Agency. See, it was created in the year 1957. It is world's central intergovernmental forum with reference to scientific and technical cooperation in the nuclear field. This agency was created in response to fears and expectations related to discoveries and diverse uses of nuclear technology. It was set up as world's Atoms for Peace organization within the United Nations family. Now its mandate is to work with member states and multiple partners worldwide so as to promote safe, secure and peaceful nuclear technologies. In other words, to promote and control the atom. So these are some of the information with reference to the analysis of this news article. Now let's move on to next article. This news article is based on a traditional art called as Tala Matale. We know that COVID-19 and lockdown and associated shutdown have forced artists of different streams to explore digital platforms and social media so as to reach out to their art lovers. In this context, the news article reports that a number of artists performed Tala Madale live on social media. Now let us discuss in brief about Tala Madale. It is an offshoot or variation of Yakshagana. To come to where it is practiced, see it is an ancient form of art practiced in the coastal regions of Karnataka and in northern Kerala. At present, it is very popular in the districts of Uttara Kannada, Dakshina Kannada, Udupi and Shimoga of Karnataka and coming to Kerala, it is at present very popular in Kasarago district of Kerala. Now when you come to a typical Tala Madale show, it consists of veteran artists sitting in a circle of fashion. There will be Bhagavada who is the singer with Tala which refers to a pair of small hand symbols. Then another major instrument they use is Madale. This is a type of drum. Therefore the name is Tala Madale. Now these artists, they assume the characters depicted or portrayed in a particular story. Say for example, the story or the mythology could be from Ramayana or Mahabharata or any other Puranas as well. These artists, they are normally well versed in the epics and Puranas and the show will be a nice presentation of their oratorical skills. So from this we can understand that speaking or oration is also a part of this traditional art form. However, the normal medium of communication here is the Kannada language. Some sources say it includes Baitak or sitting, Prasanga or episode, then Odike or reading, then Jagara or keeping awake. It is also called as Kuta or Kutam which means gathering. This term Kuta is actually against uh, Ata which refers to a costumed play. So in simple terms we can say that Tala Madale is Yakshagana but without costumes and dance. However, music speaking is common to both these forms. Now, there are many stories that relate Tala Madale and Yakshagana. Few believe that Tala Madale could have existed even before Yakshagana. A more popular story is that Tala Madale, which is a performance without costumes, developed as a rehearsal to Yakshagana, especially during the rainy days. And thus it has evolved into a traditional art form. You can see these images how both the art forms differ, particularly with reference to costumes. And exactly one month ago, on 16th May 2020, we discussed about Yakshagana. Today we will see in brief about Yakshagana as well. See, it is a rich folk dance drama, mainly practiced in the coastal area of Karnataka, also practiced in few regions in Kerala. This theatre form is over 5 centuries old. It presents mythological and historical stories from Ramayana, Mahabharata and Bhagavata Purana. The performance here includes music, dance, dialogues. They speak. One characteristic feature here is that the performers wear massive headgears and they use ornaments. There will be elaborate facial makeup. And it is said that the costume and crowns in Ekshagana, they follow the costumes of Kathakali, which is an art form in Kerala. Usually it is recited in Kannada language. They are performed in Malayalam and also in Tulu as well. 
And here there are two important varieties. One is Padu Alapaya Yakshagana, then the other is Mood Alapaya Yakshagana. Padu Alapaya Yakshagana is found in the coastal regions, whereas Mood Alapaya Yakshagana is found in the or performed in the plains. Here, Mood Alapaya Yakshagana is included in National List of Intangible Cultural Heritage. This list aims to recognize the diversity of uh, Indian culture and its intangible heritage. It aims to create awareness about various intangible cultural heritage elements from different states of India, both at national and international level, to ensure their protection. However, Yakshagana is not yet included in the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity of UNESCO. So these are some of the important information with reference to Tala Madale and Ekshagana. Now let us move on to the analysis of next news article. This news article is with reference to National Commission for Women. The article states that the National Commission of Women has registered an increase of at least 2.5 times the domestic violence complaints since the national-wide lockdown. In this context, let us discuss with reference to National Commission of Women. See, it was formed on the basis of recommendations by a committee called as Committee on the Status of Women in India. It was set up as a statutory body in January 1992 under the statute called as National Commission for Women Act of 1990. Now, the mission of this commission is to enable women to achieve equality and equal participation in all spheres of life and this is to be achieved by securing her rights and entitlements by way of suitable policy formulation, by way of laws, by way of enforcement of laws and implementation of various schemes with reference to women. First, let us discuss the composition of this commission. See, there shall be a chairperson who is committed to the cause of women. The chairperson shall be nominated by the central government. Then there shall be five members who are also nominated by the central government. Of these five members, at least one member shall be belonging to scheduled caste and one member shall be belonging to scheduled tribes. Then there shall also be a member secretary who is also nominated by the central government. Now coming to the important functions of National Commission of Women, first and foremost, it investigates and examines all matters related to the safeguards provided for women under the constitution and also under other legislations. One of the important measure or safeguard given under constitution is mentioned in article 15 class 3 which states that state shall make special provision for women. Then it reports to center about the working of various safeguards and recommends for effective implementation by central and state governments. It also suggests remedial legislative measures to address shortcomings in existing legislations. One important function is that on its own it can take notice of matters. That is it has suomoto power of taking cognizance of matters relating to deprivation of women's rights, non-implementation of laws that are to provide protection to women and to achieve equality and development of women and they can look into complaints and even take suomoto notice of matters related to non-compliance of policy decisions, guidelines, instructions related to protection and development of women. One more function is that it will present to the central government an annual report and this report shall be submitted before each house of parliament by the central government. While submitting the central government shall explain the action taken on the recommendations and the reason for non-acceptance of recommendations if any. And while investigating a matter the National Commission of Women shall have the powers of a civil court. So these are some of the important information with reference to National Commission for Women which is a statutory body. Now let's move on to the analysis of next news article. This news article reports that a team from National Disaster Management Authority will visit Raigad district in Mumbai to assess the damage caused by Cyclone Nisarga. In this context let us see few information with reference to National Disaster Management Authority. See first to be specific it is the apex statutory body for disaster management in India. It is established by the Disaster Management Act of 2005. The National Disaster Management Authority is headed by the Prime Minister. It also provides for the creation of state disaster management authorities, then also for district disaster management authorities also. Now coming to state disaster management authorities, generally headed by respective chief ministers. But coming to union territories with legislative assemblies, for the national capital territory of Delhi, it is not the chief minister who is the chairperson, rather it is the lieutenant governor who is the chairperson of Delhi Disaster Management Authority. However, this is not the case with reference to Puducherry, where chief minister is the chairperson of Puducherry Disaster Management Authority. 
the national disaster management authority it was constituted in september 2006 with prime minister as its chairperson and coming to other members of national disaster management authority the members other than the chairperson cannot be more than 9 members now as an apex body national disaster management authority it lays down policies on disaster management then it approves plans that are prepared by ministries or departments of the central government then it lays down guidelines that are to be followed by the state authorities when they draw up state plan then you can also see that it lay down broad policies and guidelines for the functioning of national institute of disaster management see this national institute of disaster management was originally formed in the year 1995 with the name national center for disaster management later it was redesignated as national institute of disaster management for training and capacity development now this national institute it comes under ministry of home affairs and it is located in new delhi these are some of the information with reference to national disaster management authority we saw about the chairperson we saw about the law based on which it is constituted then we saw its various functions then we saw also about the national institute of disaster management now let us move on to next part of the discussion we have come to the last session the practice questions discussion session now this question is with reference to international atomic energy agency two statements are given the question reads with reference to international atomic energy agency which among the following statements are correct it is an autonomous international organization within the united nations system now this statement is correct eliminate options b and d now second statement india and countries that share international land border with india are its members see first half of this statement is correct that india is a member of this agency now coming to countries that share international land border with india there are seven countries there is a mnemonics with reference to this called as bachpan mba bangladesh china pakistan nepal myanmar bhutan and afghanistan of these countries pakistan afghanistan myanmar joined in 1957 itself bangladesh joined in 1972 china joined in 1984 nepal joined in 2008 but bhutan is not a member state so statement 2 is incorrect correct answer is option a one only this question is with reference to national commission for women two statements are given they are asking which of the statements given above are incorrect first statement it is a statutory body established by protection of women from domestic violence act of 2005 now ncw is a statutory body yes but it is not a statutory body under this legislation rather it was based on the provisions of national commission for women act of 1990 so the first statement is incorrect the second statement chairperson of the commission shall be a former judge of supreme court this statement is also incorrect because there is no such thing mentioned in the act it is mentioned that the chairperson of the commission shall be committed to the cause of women so the second statement is also incorrect So the correct answer for this question is option C both 1 and 2. Now this question is with reference to National Disaster Management Authority. The question reads with reference to NDMA consider the following statements. First statement is anyways going to be correct because it is mentioned in all the options. It is the apex statutory body for disaster management in India. Now the second statement the union minister of home affairs is the chairperson of NDMA. This statement is incorrect because it is chaired by prime minister. eliminate options b and d now coming to third statement its primary purpose is to coordinate responses to natural disasters only this statement is incorrect because it also includes man made disasters as well so the correct answer for this question is option a one only now this question is with reference to kaveri river which of the following rivers are tributaries of river kaveri lakshman teertha kabini shimsha pranhita see some of the important tributaries of kaveri river are harangi hemavati shimsha arkavati then lakshman teertha kabini swarnavati bhavani noyil and amaravati now in the question you find the term pranhita see it is the largest tributary of river godavari therefore you can eliminate options c and options d here the correct answer is option b 1 2 and 3 only now coming to river godavari it is the largest of the peninsula rivers and it is the third largest river in india with this we come to the end of today's the hindu news analysis if you like the video if you would have enjoyed the content don't fail to click the like button and share this resource among your friends and those who are in need of such resources and subscribe to the shankarayes academy youtube channel to get notified about new updates